Good morning. Uh, today, every scripture I take, it's from the New King James Version. Amen. And if I have to put a title, I would say, God is with you. Yes. Yes, he is. First, Thessalonians 5.23. Thessalonians, sorry. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. Verse 24. He who call you is faithful. Yes, he is. Who also, who also will do it. Mm. Philippians 2, 12 to 15. This is a letter Paul wrote to the Philippians. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Yes. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Mm. For it is God who works in you. Yes, it is. To and to do for his good pleasure. Uh, hallelujah. Do all things without complaining and disputing. Mm -hmm. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Jesus. Jesus. That you may become blameless and harmless, children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, generation. Yes. among whom you shine as a light in the world. God has not left us facing the challenge of his will. He is with us and in us to help us he is, it is, sorry, it is he who create in us the desire mm. and power. To yes, him. yes. The life of the spirit. I put Roman 8, 1, 2, 6. Therefore, no, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. No, there is not. Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Yes. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Mm-hmm. For what the law could not do in that it, it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh yes. on the of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh. Yes, he did. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit yes for those who live according to the flesh set their mind on the things of the flesh mm -hmm. but those who live according to the spirit the things of the spirit mm. for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Yes, it is. Psalm 36, 9. For which you is the fountain of life. In your light, we see light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. John 8, 12. Yes. Then Jesus, then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in the darkness, but have the light of life. Mm -hmm. 
this is was talking uh, in that when the the woman got in adultery, mm -hmm. uh, Jesus for, forgive uh, the woman, and he was standing in the part of the temple uh, where the faithful give their offerings, uh, give their offerings, and where the I don't know if it, I got the good word uh, candlestick, the chandelier, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. bird burn in remembrance of the pillar of fire yes that led the people of israel into the desert mm -hmm. the pillar of fire represent the presence the protection and the direction of god mm -hmm. like likewise in the person of jesus god is present protect and guide mm -hmm. Matthew uh, 5, 14 to 16. We are the light of the world. A city that is set on the hill cannot be hidden. Mm -hmm. nor, nor to they light a lamp and put it under the basket, but, but on the lampstand, and it give light to all who are in the house. Yes. Let let your light so shine before man, so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Mm -hmm. So, are we gonna make mistake again? Yes, certainly. Are we gonna fall short again? Yes, certainly. Mm -hmm. We go to God when it happened. We ask forgiveness. We repent and we turn away up. Mm -hmm. He is in us, with us, helping us. Yes. And Philippians 1 6, being confident of this very thing, uh -huh. that he who has begun a good work in him, oh, yes, it until the day of Jesus Christ. Yes. And. and God bless you all. Praise God. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Thank you for those words of encouragement. Amen. Nothing can encourage you more than the scripture and the word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come in to share with us the scripture in which is going to be the basis of my message. Uh, this morning is Sister Hope Kalam. Uh, good morning, church. Good morning, uh, we... my sister. Good morning. The reading of the Lord's Word is Galatians chapter 1, 1 to 10. Paul, an apostle, not from men nor through men, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead, and all the brethren who are with me, to the churches of Galilee, grace to you and peace from God, the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us this present evil age according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I marvel, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. Yes. And as we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be accursed. For do I now pursue the men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I still please men, I would not be a bond servant of Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. What a scripture uh, yes. that we're going to talk about today. Praise God. Um, we see it in the body of Christ. Uh, the title of my message this morning is Signs That You Are Longing for Approval. Signs that you're longing for approval. There are many in, in the church 
that are seeking approval and they're seeking approval from man. They're seeking approval from the court system. They're seeking approval from the government. And so I, I thought that I wanted to target this topic this morning, that we are not to long for approval and control anywhere else other than what God has given to us. And so there, there are four, five areas that I want to dig into this. And if it's you, say ouch and just hold your word. I'm getting to it. You obsess about what others think. Mm. Number one. Number two. You're often overly sensitive. Number three. You compromise your values. Number four. You hesitate sharing your faith. And number five. You have a hard time saying no. Mm. That anointed word that is no. All right. Proverbs 29 verse 25 said, the fear of men will prove to be a snare. Mm -hmm. But whoever trusts in the Lord is kept saved. Amen. Now, fear of people can hamper everything that you and I try to do. In extreme forms, it can make you afraid even to leave your very house. And by contrast, the fear of God is respect, reverence, and trust. And it's liberating. It's freedom. Why fear people who can do no eternal harm? Instead, trust God who can turn the harm intended by others into good for those who trust him. So the question that I have for you this morning is how do we overcome the disease to please? Mm. How do we overcome the disease to please? Number one, focus on pleasing God instead of pleasing people. Amen. Okay. Obviously, in Galatians 1.10, Paul says, I'm not trying to win the approval of people, but of God. Okay. If pleasing people were my goal, I would not be Christ's servant. So, I'm sorry, if your pastor is not pleasing you, then he would not be a servant of the living God. Because he is not your pastor to please you. He's your pastor to please God. Amen. All right? The Judaizers are identified by the false gospel that they preach. A test of a person's ministry is not how popular they are Come on. or how, how many miraculous signs and wonders, but their test is their faithfulness to the word of God. Amen. Note that John 2, uh, 2 John 1, uh, verse 5 to 11 warns us not to encourage those who bring false doctrine. Christ had committed the gospel to Paul, and he in turn had committed it to other faithful servants. Every message we preach, whether you're a minister, whether you're just sitting in the background, whether you're just sitting in the congregation, whether you're sitting at home receiving this message, whether you're an elder, whether you're a deacon, it does not matter. The gospel that is given to you has been committed to you so that you be faithful with it as you continue to walk through this life. But the Judaizers had come along and substituted their false gospel for the true gospel, which we know is sin. Paul pronounced them a curse. Mm -hmm. No matter who the preacher may be, he said, an angel from heaven, or even Paul himself, if he preaches any other gospel, he is accursed. That's right. Paul was definitely not a man pleaser. His ministry did not come from man, nor did his message come from man. His ministry, why then should you be afraid of man? Why should you seek to please men? His heart's desire. 
total heart's desire, total commitment was to please Christ. Number two, live from the approval of God instead of for the approval of people. I repeat that. Live from the approval of God instead of for the approval of people. First Thessalonians 2 4 said, On the contrary, we speak as those approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. We're not trying to please people, but God who tests our hearts. Paul did not use guile or trickery to win converts. Neither should we. The world translated guile carries the idea of baiting a hook. In other words, he did not trap people into being saved. That is not what we do. The way a clever salesman traps people into buying his product. Have you been trapped into buying a product by a clever salesman? Spiritual witnessing and Christ's salesmanship are different. Salvation does not lie at the end of a clever argument or a subtle presentation. It is the res result of God's word and the power of the Holy Spirit. Often we hear, folks, I don't care what your method is, just as long as your message is right. But some methods are unworthy of the gospel. All right. I'll focus on these points in a few moments when we talk about control gone bad. They're cheap, whereas the gospel is a costly message that yeah. required the death of God's only son. That's right. They are worldly. They are man-centered, whereas the gospel is a divine message centered only in Christ's glory. Now, continue in Thessalonica, Paul's enemies accuse him of being a cheap peddler of this news message. They said that his only motive was to make money. Hmm. In describing himself as a faithful steward, Paul answered these critics. And Paul's readers knew that he told the truth. First of all, he appealed to the witness of God. He appealed to their own witness. He had a conscience void of offense toward God and toward men, found in Acts 24, verse 16. Paul abdor flattery. Did you know that David in the Bible also hated the sin? He's David said in Psalm 12, verse 2, they speak vanity, everyone with his neighbor, with flattering lips, and with a double heart do they speak. Now, tell me, folks, how can you speak with a double heart? Mm. If what comes out of your mouth is not in your heart, choose not to speak it. Amen. Man, I, say that again, Bishop. <laughs> praise the Lord. If, if you choose... What comes out of your mouth is flattery. You know that it comes from your heart. Do not do it. Amen. Okay? I once read that a flatterer is a person who manipulates rather than communicates. A flatterer can use either truth or lies to achieve his unholy purpose, which is to control your decisions for their own profit. That's right. Well, People even flatter themselves. In fact, Psalm 36, verses 2 and 8, I believe, it says, For he flatters himself in his own eyes. Remember the sin of Haman? That evil man in the book of Esther? He was so interested in flattering himself that he even plotted to slaughter all the Jews to achieve that glory or that goal. Some people try to flatter God. Mm. I I'm not speaking about you this morning because Psalm 38, 78 verse 36 said, nevertheless, they is being Israel. 
did flatter him, God, with their mouth, and they lied unto him with their tongues. Mm. Mm. So flattery then, in my, on, my, my honest opinion and ministry, is another form of lying. Okay? Yes. It, it's saying one thing to God with her lips, while our hearts are far from him. Far from him. And you can read that in Mark chapter 7, verse 6. One thing with their lips. Their hearts are far from him. That's right. Some believers try to win friends and influence people by appealing to their egos. A true ministry of the gospel deals honestly, but lovingly, with sin and judgment and leaves the unbeliever with nothing to boast of in himself. So Paul's method here was as pure as his motive. He represented the word of God in the power of the Holy Spirit, and he trusted God to do the work. That is where we need to be. We need to be at a place where if you have placed something in God's hand, if you have placed someone in God's hand, let the Holy Spirit do the work in their lives. Amen. Amen. You don't have to inform them. You don't have to flatter them. You don't have to lie to them. You don't have to do anything because other than allowing the Holy Spirit to walk in their lives, you have accomplished nothing. So where does control go bad? Well, let's go all the way back to Genesis. Genesis 16, 1 to 4. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children. But she had an Egyptian maid servant named Hagar. And so she said to Abram, The Lord has kept me from having children. Go sleep with my maid servant. Perhaps I can build a family through her. Abram agreed to what Sarah said. Mm. So after Abram had been living in Canaan 10 years, Sarai, his wife, took her Egyptian maidservant, Hagar, gave her to her husband to, his, to be his wife. He slept with Hagar and she conceived. So wait a minute. God told you, Abram, that I will be the one to provide. Good old Sarah, faithful Sarah, says, I'm not going to be able to do this. Hey, go sleep with my, my maidservant, Hagar. And so God had made the covenant, and God would fulfill it. All Abraham and Herod and, and Sarah had to do was wait by faith. Wait. Oh, you say the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. How many times have you always used that excuse? Wow. I, I can't wait on God. It, God is taking too long. Oh. <laughs> God is taking, or God has delivered you. As we know in our congregation, God has delivered you from addiction. But instead of you walk in your deliverance, you condemn somebody else mm. who struggles with theirs. Wow. Hello? Hello? Yep. You say what is in your mouth, but truly what is in your heart. With the same faithfulness, with the same waiting on God that you are walking through, that you have struggled with, it may not be addiction, it may be something else. Remember that you are all waiting on God. Amen. Waiting for the Holy Spirit to, to, to allow you to exercise your faith. Abraham listened to God in the previous chapter. But here he was in this chapter of 16. Okay, He is listening to his wife and reveal his unbelief. Mm. He ceased to walk in the Spirit and he began to walk in the flesh. I can hear it now. Oh, you can't do this. Oh, 
you know, is, is it possible? Is it possible? Oh, God didn't do this for me. Oh, he did it for you, but he didn't do it for me. Maybe, maybe, I, I don't know where I am. Your trust is in the Lord. That's it. Simple. By faith. So Amen. this explains to us why God had to wait until they were old enough before he gave them the child. Mm -hmm. That's the explanation. He could have given it immediately. Yes. But their unbelief caused them to doubt God. So God said, okay, it's going to come to a place where you know that you can't do it. Okay. On your own. That if anything is done, it has to be God. Has to be. Okay. Isn't that some things that are happening in our family's life or in our neighbor's life? Wait a minute. Why isn't God moving in that direction? Why isn't God drawing them by his Holy Spirit? Because they're living in doubt. They're living in unbelief. And God needs to get them to a place where only God. When you say only God, only God can do it. If you can do it any other way, then it is not God. It's not God. In Genesis 16, Sarah blames God for her barren condition. Mm. And she even hinted that he's not good to them. And so she turned to the world for help. Wow. Right? The world in this case was Hagar the Egyptian. Mm -hmm. The whole scheme fails. The works of the flesh now appear. Oh, there's a beautiful story. And I'm going to allow her to share it one day. In fact, I'm going to allow, it, allow them one day to share it. But if I may just sure, yeah, share just a portion. The last chapels waited on God. But the world approached them and said, why don't you have me have your child for you? And I will have the child for you and it will still be your child. I remember them approaching the pastor. I remember them coming into our presence and said, we, we want to do this. And I said, no, wait on the Lord. Wait and allow God to fulfill what he has promised. Seven years later, that is what he has promised. Amen. The doctor said, no, you cannot. You're not going to. So this is the best way to do it. And they said, no, that's not what God has said to us. We will wait on the Lord. And they waited. Why you say how we how you say we are always so bright and genuine with a young man by the name of Anders because we know what God has done. Mm, amen. They did not depend on the works of the flesh. They did not depend on the world to get them to the place where He wanted them to be. Amen. Moving on. Name what you're trying to control. Name what you're trying to control. Is it worth my concern? Luke chapter 10, verse 41 and 42. Martha, Martha, hmm. the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things. Hmm. But only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better. And it will not be taken away from her. All right. So it seems evident here that the Lord wants each of us to imitate Mary in our worship and Martha in our work. I could say this morning, blessed are the balance. Consider Martha's situation. She received Jesus into her home. And then neglected him as she prepared an elaborate meal that he did not need. 
I hope you're listening this morning. A meal was in order. But what do we do with Christ is far more important than what we do for Christ. Mm -hmm. Repeat that. What we do with Christ is, is far more important than what we do for Christ. Amen. Again, it's not an either or situation. All it's right. a matter of balance. Mary had done her share of the work in the kitchen and then had gone to feed on the Lord's teaching. Martha neglected after Mary left the kitchen and she began to complain and to suggest that neither the Lord nor Mary really cared. Wow. Now, few things are as damaging to the believer life as trying to work for Christ without taking time to commune with him. Mm. John 15, 5 says, for without me, you can do nothing. Mary chose the better part, the part that could not be taken from her. She knew that she could not live by bread alone. Mm -hmm. When we criticize others and pity ourselves because we feel overworked, we had better take time to examine our life. Mm -hmm. Perhaps in all of our busyness, we have been ignoring the Lord. Martha's problem was not that she had too much work to do, but that she allowed her work to distract her and pull her apart. Mm -hmm. she was trying to serve two masters. Wow. If serving Christ makes us difficult to live with, then something is terribly wrong with our service. The key is to have the right priorities. Jesus Christ first, then others, then ourselves. It is vitally important that we spend time at the feet of Jesus every single day. Let him share his word with you every single day. All right. The most important part of the Christian life is the part, my friends, that only God sees. And unless we meet Christ personally and privately each day, we will soon end up like Martha, busy but not blessed. Hmm. Is it mine to control? Remember, I'm asking the question. Name that. Name what you're trying to control. Is it mine to control? Well, James 4, 13, 14 said, now listen. You who say, today or tomorrow, we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business, and make money. Why you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. Oh. So pride, criticism, self-confidence go together. Humble people pray to God for help. In order to help disobedient Christians, and they try to love them back to fellowship with Christ. Now, the humble know how to say, if the Lord wills. Wills, that's right. As they make their plans day by day, if the Lord wills. But these believers were boasting of their plans and anticipated success. They would go to the big city, set up business, come back wealthy. He warns them that this carnal boasting and self-confidence is dangerous. To begin with, we know nothing about tomorrow. Only God knows. Let me get some. Where's my water? Need some water? I thought I had some. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, darling. All right. Carnal boasting and self-confidence is dangerous. If you don't understand that word self-confidence, let me break it down for you. Having confidence in your own ability. Mm. To begin with, we know nothing about tomorrow. Do you know about tomorrow? But you know who holds tomorrow. Amen. We all do. 
Furthermore, life itself is very uncertain. In fact, Job 7-7, seven, seven, a cloud that quickly comes and quickly goes. That's life. We do not even know when life will end. So how can we be so confident? We ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live. Every believer needs to keep before his or her eyes an awareness of the brevity of of life. Psalm 90 verse 12 says, so teach us to number our days mm -hmm. that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Boasting about any unknown future is a sin. Amen. Yet so many people, so many believers make their plans without praying or seeking the mind of God. They say, well, Pastor, <laughs> I believe that this would be God's will for my life. So I asked the question, how do you know if it's God's will for my life? Well, they say, God wouldn't want me to be. I said, listen to what you just said. God, God wouldn't want me to be. Do you know the mind of God? Do you know the plan of God? Is it possible? I can give you some history in which I've gone through. And if I was walking in the flesh, I'll tell you right now, I would not be sitting before you. That's, that's part of my life. So I can only preach what is part of my life. Mm -hmm. Too many people make their plans without praying. Or seeking the mind of God. They live like the worldly sinner. Who thinks that he has security for the future. But discovered he has lost everything. You find that in Luke chapter 12. The next question I have for us this morning. Is it for God alone? Well let's look at Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything. By prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, with passes, with transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So let me break that down. Right praying. Not just praying. Mm -hmm. What? You see, the Bible nowhere says that any kind of prayer will bring peace to our hearts. Nowhere. That's right. What is right praying? It begins with adoration. This is what prayer means. You know, there's many in the world that think prayer means, oh, well, if I, if I rub the genie, you know, God is going to listen to me because I'm God's child. That's not what prayer is. Read Philippians 4, 6. I've just read it. This is love. Encouraging or enjoying the presence of the Lord. Honoring him. It's worship. Because when we rush into his presence. And begging for peace of mind. That will never get a result. We must bow before him in worship. And let him search our hearts. And our minds. Next comes supplication. Big word. But all that it means is. The earnest. Sincere desire. Of the heart. True prayer comes from the heart. Friends. Not the lips. What a joy it is to present our request to him. Mm -hmm. Because if not. It's the Holy Spirit that already gave us. What we should ask for. Hello? Amen. Is the Holy Spirit giving you what you should pray for? Yes. Okay, read our Bibles. What a joy it is then to present our request to him. Finally, there's appreciation or thanksgiving. You know, it takes faith to thank him for yes. uncomfortable circumstances. 
or for request not yet granted. Well, Lord, you said that you would do this. And I'm still waiting. Remember, go back to Abram and Sarai. Why did the Lord allow them to wait all of that time? Every time they sneeze in the east, far off east, okay, you know that they're cousins fighting each other. <laughs> all Abraham's children. And they're at war with each other. Anytime you hear a sneeze and the oil price goes up, remember, they're all Abraham's children. But somebody was disobedient. And then when God allowed that bitterness to be seen, she chased Hagar off into the desert with her son. She said, get out of here. But you were the one that said it was okay. This is exactly what we do. And we don't give God thanks in all things. We don't give God thanks. Lord, thank you. We, we thank him for the good things unto us. Like, what is good unto us? What, what do you consider good unto us? I want you to read Daniel 6, verse 10. And you will see that this way, this is the way that Daniel prayed. No wonder Daniel had peace in the lion's den. Because that is the prayer. How do you pray? Do you pray rightly? Well, Genesis 22, verse 13 to 14, back to Abraham. Brave Abraham went over, took the ram, sacrificed it. As a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place. The Lord will provide. Jehovah Jireh. So with the question. I've got a couple of answers biblically. If I go too fast. Just listen to the service again. Get your pen and paper. What do you, okay, know God says you are? What do you know? Well, I can say, there's a couple of them here. There's... That's just the phone. Don't, don't worry about it. It's just the phone that is going off. You are a new creation in Christ. You are forgiven and your sins are washed away. You are more than a conqueror through Christ. You are God's masterpiece. You are the light of this world. You are filled with the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. You are joint heir with Christ. You are Christ's ambassadors. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Last but not least, you are greatly loved by God. So Romans 12, 2 defines it. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Hallelujah. Just give him her mind in order for it to be renewed. The world wants to control your mind, folks. Mm. But God wants to transform your mind. Amen. And the word transform is the same as transfigured. In Matthew 17, verse 2. It has come into our English language today as the word metamorphosis. It describes a change from within. The world wants to change your mind. So what does it do? It exerts pressure from without. But the Holy Spirit changes your mind by releasing power from within. If the world controls your thinking, you are a conformer. 
If God controls your thinking, you are a transformer. God transforms our minds and he makes us spiritually minded by using his word. Not our own word, his word. As you spend time meditating on God's word, memorizing it, making it part of your inner man, God will gradually make your mind more spiritual. You can read that in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse, in, verse 18. But you not only give him your mind, folks. How about giving him your will? You see, your mind controls your body, mm -hmm. but your will controls your mind. Many people think that they can control their will by willpower. You know that? You hear it in the world often. Oh, I can do this. Oh, you, you tell the child that they're, they're good. They can go forth and they can do this and they can by their willpower. Well, let me say this morning, no, they're not going to do it by their own willpower. At some point in time, they will fail. It is only when we yield the will to God that his power can take over and give us the willpower and the willpower that we need to be victorious. How can we be victorious? We can be victorious because of what the power of God can take over. What we have allowed him to take over. We surrender our wills to God through disciplined prayer. As we spend time in prayer. We surrender our will to God and we pray with the Lord, not my will, but thine be done. You must pray about everything and let God have his way in everything. Mm -hmm. Lord, this is the job that I want. I've wanted this job all my life. No. I said, Lord, if it be your will. And this job is for me. You're going to give me the strength Amen. to do this. That's it. So I must have right relationship with God. I must pray about everything. And I must let the Lord have his way in everything. Romans 12, 1 said, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Before we trusted Christ, we used our body for sinful pleasures and purposes. But now that we belong to him, we want to use our body for his glory. You see, the Christian's body is God's temple because the spirit of God dwells within. It is our privilege to glorify Christ in our body and magnify Christ in our body. So just as Jesus Christ had to take himself a body in order to accomplish God's will on earth, so we must yield our bodies to Christ that he might continue God's work through our life. So we must yield the members of our body, instruments of righteousness. For the Holy Spirit to use in the doing of God's work. So it is a part that we said we're not just doing God's work. He is doing his work through us. Right? Remember the statement that I made up at the top. It is not doing this for God. It is allowing God to use you. Okay. To do it for him. To he gets the glory. That's the final mark. That's the final stage. God gets the glory. The Old Testament sacrifices were dead sacrifice, but the Lord said we are to be living sacrifices. There are two living sacrifices in the Bible, and they help us understand what this really means. First is Isaac. The second is our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Isaac willingly put himself on the altar. And would have died in obedience to God's will. 
But the Lord sent Ram to take his place. Yes. Isaac died just the same. He died to self and willingly yielded himself to the will of God. When he got off that altar, Isaac represented a living sacrifice to the glory of God. And of course, our Lord Jesus Christ, perfect illustration of a living sacrifice. Because he actually died as a living sacrifice Hmm. in obedience to his Father's will. Amen. I thank God this morning he rose again. Yes. And today, he's in heaven heaven. as a living sacrifice. Hallelujah. And in his body, the wounds of Calvary. Thank God this morning, he's your high priest. He's my high priest. Thank God this morning, he's our advocate. Mm. And he stands before the throne of God, interceding on our behalf. When we fall down, he's there. And he's before the Father, and he said, Father, I died for that one. Mm. My blood was spilt for that one. That's right. So none of us this morning can ever say that we did it all by ourselves. We are so good. We are so perfect. If you are a perfect Christian this morning, watch out. Because there's only one perfect. And his name is Jesus. Yes, amen. May God bless you and have a great weekend. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. 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 Bless the amen. Lord. Amen. The wonderful message that has gone forth on this morning. I pray that you have had the opportunity to. Um, jot down some notes and as the pastor said if he went a little fast you can always listen to the message again you always pick up something the second time around it's missed the first time um and i'll just say this we just need to remember who we are in christ jesus never have a doubt we got a laundry list of who we are so when somebody says something to you contrary to who god says you are you tell them you obviously don't know me I'm a friend of God. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask that um, Minister Jerry, if you would please close us with a word of prayer on today and dismiss us from service. God bless you, everyone. And thank you for fellowship this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for this day that you have given us. Mm. Thank you for all your provisions today. Thank you for that breath of light you give us. Yes, Lord. Fresh air. New awakening. Yeah, so you continue your hand of favor on us, Lord. Yes, God. Go from your favor and not to somebody else's favor. It's always from your favor. So we leave with your favor. Yes. <coughs> Thank you for our fast and for work hard. <clears throat> That's the blessing of the journey's law. Yes. That's the blessing of the church and the ball. Amen. 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 May God bless you all. Bless you, Have a great week in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Bye. To lie to my American friends. God bless you. Yeah. Bye. 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 Bye